Hey everyone, my name is Jesse Jennings and welcome to Craft Break. Sorry about that, if you're watching the previous stream, um, we have a little bit of technical difficulties, so I'm glad you found us again. We're gonna go ahead and get restarted. Luckily, we haven't done any crafting yet, so you didn't miss much. Um, but I want to let you know that today we'll be talking about a really special new formula of paint we have here at Plaid called Kix Studio. So Kix Studio is specially formulated for shoe painting. Shoe painting is a really great trend right now. If you get on Pinterest and Instagram, it is all over the place. People are starting their own shoe painting businesses, so it's really fun to do, and it's, we've made it really easy for you with this new Kick Studio paint. So specifically I'll be talking about this kit that you can purchase on walmart.com and the link is in our description here so make sure to check that out after we're done going live. But you get these six great colors and what I love about this kit is that you have all the primary colors and then some so you can mix any color in the rainbow. We've been going live a lot the past couple of weeks talking about this particular kit at walmart.com um, and you can see here, here's a shoe that I made um, last week, I think, and there's lots of colors here that I've made that um, I, uh, aren't in the kit because I mix them. So just so many different designs, so many different styles and patterns you can do using this kit. So um, today we've got Steven here in the studio as usual. So if you've got any questions or comments as I'm doing our little tutorial, please make sure to pop those in the chat and he'll relay them to me or answer them himself. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to know if you've used cakes before, if you're excited. Um, if you've done shoe painting in the past and you want to check it out, please just let us know. We'd be happy to answer all of your questions as well. Absolutely. You ready to get started, Jesse? I'm ready. Cool. Okay. So today, you can see, we'll be painting this super cute little slip-on sneaker um, with hibiscus flowers. So it's really great for summertime. Uh, this is a great shoe to throw on with your dress or throw on with your shorts and run errands. But I got these shoes at Walmart, and I just thought they needed a little bit of uh, sprucing up. So I painted some really fun, bright flowers on them. Um, so again, I got these at Walmart. They're super inexpensive. You can get these um, yourself there as well, and then purchase the kit on walmart.com. But I'm going to show you how I went ahead and painted these flowers. So I'll set this one aside. I've done the uh, right one. Now I'm going to do the left. I'm going to grab some of my, oops, let me grab this bottle. I'm my red here. And like I said, we'll be doing a little bit of mixing today. They're super easy to mix. They blend really beautifully. Put a little yellow on my palette. And that's all I've, I need for just the moment. So I've got a small flat brush here. This is a number eight flat. I'm gonna pick up some of my red and then grab a little bit of yellow and just sort of blend that on my palette paper here. So I got a little bit of a lighter red, a little orangey red. Mix more if you need it. You can see they mix just as well as any acrylic paint. Okay, wipe off some of that excess paint. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start painting our flower shapes on here. So I'm gonna do one flower right in the middle so you can get an idea of what the whole shape would look like. So. I'm gonna start by painting my petal, and the petal is gonna be like a V shape and then a curve at the top with that little bump in the middle. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll start by, I've got my flat side of my brush. I'll paint that V shape. And then that curve at the top, that bump in the middle. And I should talk about this too. I am painting on canvas today. So this is a canvas shoe. Kix works great on canvas. It also works really well on leather and faux leather. So here's a great bag that Kirsten Jones painted. Um, it's got awesome coverage, but it works great on this smooth surface too. So since I'm painting on a canvas shoe, and of course it's not primed or anything, like maybe you're thinking of a stretched canvas would be, it drags a little, so I'm just gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water, and that's gonna help it just flow a little while I'm painting out my design. So it doesn't catch on those fibers. And then once you dip your brush in just a tiny bit of water, you don't need a ton of water. You don't want to dilute your paint. You don't want to water it down. Just enough to keep your brush flowing. I'm going to fill in that shape. And then we're going to repeat this shape going all the way around until we have a full flower. So another V here. And you could even kind of lay out your V's if you want ahead of time and make sure that, you know, you've got good placement for your flowers. You can also feel free to sketch this out with like a pencil or um, if you've got like a fabric pen or something, if you are really into fabric crafting, feel free to do that as well. I'm kind of winging it here today. So I'm going to do that bump at the top, my little curve, the bump in the center. And that's just um, how you get that really distinct, um, flower petal shape, that distinct hibiscus flower petal shape, I should say. 
It's made really easy with the star that you drew before. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, hopefully that helps you guys. You can sometimes, you know, when you're painting flowers like this, just when you're doing that straight overhead sort of view, um, not at an angle or anything, you end up with five petals. Sometimes you end up with six petals. So it just depends on how big you make your petals and how much room you have to paint them. So I'm just gonna, kind of continuing these. I'm just filling them in as I go. And I like that you're not doing a mirror copy of the other shoe. Like the, it looks like the hibiscus is sort of placed yeah. just right on top how it is, you know? Yeah, I'm just kind of going to do like an all over pattern here. So they don't look too alike. Um, it almost looks like it's part of the fabric. It kind of looks like the Kix paint is so soft and it blends in so nicely with the fabric that it looks like it was kind of um, just made of a printed fabric. But it wasn't, it was hand painted and it was super easy to do. So I'm just continuing my petals all the way around. Don't forget that bump in the center that really makes it look like a hibiscus flower. And then just filling it in. And I'm just kind of remixing this orange color as I go. If you don't get the exact color, that is okay. As you can see here in our original shoe, we've got lots of variations of that orange and red. So we're gonna have um, lots of different uh, colors going on in this one flower. So if it kind of changes from start to finish, that is okay. It'll actually make it look really pretty when we're done. All right, we're on our last petal here. Just finish blending it in. You can see the paint doesn't bleed at all in the fabric. It goes right where you want it to and it covers so well, especially on this canvas material. One coat and we'll be done. You can see, I don't have to do a second coat at all. It looks perfect. So now we're gonna start adding some shading and some value to our flower here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. And I'm going to grab a little bit of black. You need hardly any black, just the tiniest bit of black um, will go a long way when we're mixing these colors. We're gonna use it to darken our red, but you'll see once you start mixing, if you add any more than even just like the tip of your brush worth of black, it's gonna get very dark very quick and that's not what we want. We're gonna be looking for this deep red color right here. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna grab my um, liner brush. I've got a number three round brush here. I'm gonna grab some red. And then, like I said, I'm gonna get the teensiest, like how much black. That might even be too much if I'm being honest. There's hardly any black on my brush. So we'll mix it and see where we get. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit dark. So I'm gonna pick up some red and add it. You can see how very little black is needed. So I'm gonna take my brush. That looks good to me. It's like a dark, deep red color. And we're gonna start in the center and we're gonna kind of frame each of these petals to give it some shape. So I'm gonna go up and draw a line on either side, almost outlining, starting from the center of the petal. You can see it kind of gives it a shadow and makes it look a little more dimensional. So do the same thing on all of them. If your uh, red is looking too dark, then go ahead and add some more um, red to it. If it's really just blending in with the red you already have down and you can't see the difference, add a little bit more black to it. You wanna make sure you have a good contrast between those two colors so you can really see that shadow. So it should look something like that now. We've got those lines on either side of each of our petals. And now we're gonna get most of the paint off our brush. You don't need a ton. We're gonna go back and do sort of a feathering motion in between those lines and you can see how that blends it out. Do you see that? Watch yeah. this. And by feathering, I mean you're gonna press down and pull up, press down, pull up. So you get that like wispy effect with your brush. Makes it, the uh, shading like really subtle. Yes, and it's super easy to do. See that? Really simple. So you can go back and you can add a little more, you know, shading to some of the um, outer edges of your petal if you want, just to give it some detail and dimension. But you can see it's already really starting to come to life and look um, three-dimensional. And we really haven't done that much. We've only done two colors so far. Okay, how's everybody doing in the comments, Stephen? Doing good. Good, awesome. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of a lighter color and we're gonna do some highlighting on our flower. So to do that, we're gonna grab some red and then we're gonna put some yellow in it. 
And some of you might be wondering why we're not putting um, white into our red. And that would make pink, of course. So you could highlight with pink if you want, but we've got this like really warm tones kind of going on. So orange, a little more orange of a color is gonna make a little bit more sense for this particular flower um, because it's going to look very, like I said, very warm. Um, and we've already kind of got an orangey red going on to begin with. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little, maybe a teensy bit more yellow. So we've got this nice, just very classic orange color here, very pumpkin-y. And I'm gonna use this, and we're gonna do something really similar um, to what we already did to the petals, but kind of starting on the outside, going in. So we're gonna do lines on the outer edge. Oh, and look, see, I just painted that on, and you can't see it at all. So that means I need to add more yellow. It was too close to my base color. So I need to lighten that up a little bit. So if that happened to you, just do what I'm doing. Okay, so hopefully that'll be better. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna do the outer edge here. Just like we kind of did on the inside, but opposite. And you can see that gives it a really pretty and easy highlight. Okay, and now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. We're gonna feather, but we're gonna go inwards. So just like we did with the dark, we're gonna kind of feather that out and go towards the middle of the flower. Basically trying to get rid of the harsh lines that our highlight paint just made, right? Yep, pretty much. We're kind of just, it's a really easy way to blend those lines together. And the Kix paint blends so well together that it just makes it super easy too. So well. Like I said, not only does it mix really well, but um, it works really great for, you know, blending on whatever it is you have to be painting, whether it's a shoe or a purse, um, whatever kind of accessory it is, whatever material it is, it blends super well. It's really, really easy to use. And you can see how highly pigmented they are. Like these colors are super bright. They're so pretty. Okay, so now we've got a lot of our flower done. So I'm gonna add a couple more details and then I'll show you how to paint the leaves. So I just rinse my brush off. I've still got my number three round brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and we're gonna add some extra details to our flower. So now I'm gonna go around um, the very outer edge of the petals and just give it an extra bright sort of highlight. I'm gonna kinda go over the line we just made, the very tip of my brush, just to make it even brighter. You don't need a ton of paint, just a little line. It kind of just makes our flower pop. See that? And then while we've got this brush, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint the stamen. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I was looking at Dylan, our plant guy. <laughs> we're gonna paint this middle thing in the flower. I'm pretty sure it's the stamen. Okay, so I'm gonna I've got my yellow, I've still got my number three round brush. I'm gonna start in the very center. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it in one stroke. I'm gonna press down and then pull out in kind of a curved shape. So you can see here, this is what we're painting. I curve a little bit. No matter what direction you go in, you want a little bit of a curve. So I'll show you what I mean. That's a good tip. Press down, oops, you don't want too much paint. Press down, pull out, just like that. And then whatever you get, leave it. I promise once you add the details, it'll look good. Now I'm gonna add the little dots around it to make it really look like the middle of a hibiscus flower. And there you go. Nice. Yeah, and if you guys know for sure that that's called a stamen, <laughs> let us know in the comments. We would love to yes, have that please. confirmed for us. Okay, all right, so now we've got our flower painted. You could see how you could just continue this, kind of peeking over the rest of the shoe. You know, you could paint some petals coming down here, some petals coming up the side if you wanted to. Um, now I'm gonna show you how to paint the leaves. So I'm gonna put some green on my palette here. It's a perfect leaf green color, but of course we're gonna add some um, shading and some highlighting just like we did for our flower. So I'm gonna pick up my um, number eight flat brush. This is the one we used in the beginning. And I'm gonna paint a very classic leaf shape. What I mean by that 
is just kind of, oops, kind of what you think of when you think of a leaf. Just this classic, just like that. So that's what I think of when I think of a leaf, and that's what I'm referring to. I'm going to pick up some of my green, kind of decide where you want your leaves to be. I guess I'll do one kind of down here, going down. I'm going to paint that leaf shape. Maybe I'll do three. And I'm kind of being mindful of like where the details of my shoe start and just kind of working around that. Okay, so I'll have three leaves there. Go ahead, I'm gonna paint, fill those in. I'm trying to avoid my red. Just carefully filling in that green. And I like that you're being mindful of the what did you how did you call it the like details yeah. of the shoe mm -hmm. like we're not just trying to cover the thing we're trying to make it the design fall within this one particular part of the shoe exactly and that's what i kind of mentioned earlier it looks like it was made with this like hibiscus flower printed fabric because i really did just kind of go around all the details i went around the sole of the shoe um, and the seams and everything to make sure that it really fits in nicely with the shape yeah i think we've got a lot of people in the comments who really like this too oh good good i'm glad Okay, so now I've just got my green filled in there. I've got my three leaves. Go ahead and rinse my brush off because I'm going to switch back to my tiny brush. Going back to my number three round, I'm going to pick up some of the green on this brush and I'm going to do the little um, sort of sawed edges. So it almost has like a li little teeth to it on the edge. It looks like a saw. That's what the hibiscus um, leaves look like when I was doing my research for my painting. <laughs> um, I should have looked up what the center of the flower was called. Now I know for next time. But I'm going to use this little brush to make those details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right on the edge and I'm going to go just beyond the edge and press down and pull in right onto the green. Just beyond the edge, press down, pull in. And I'm just going to keep doing that all along the edge of my leaves to get that little edge. You're going to do it for all your leaves all the way around. It's one of those nice uh, little extra details that just really sells the design. Yeah, I agree. They almost remind me of like ro like the leaves on roses. They have that like little sawtooth edge. Yeah. And my last one. So now we've got our edges complete. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some highlights. So we're gonna use yellow again to lighten this color because of course to get green, you would mix blue and yellow. So yellow will make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna grab some yellow and grab some green. I still got my number three round brush and I'm just gonna mix a little bit lighter of a green than what we started with. Wipe off some of that excess. And I'm going to start by painting the veins of the leaf. So um, the vein is, you know, that line up the center, kind of like the structure of the leaf. I'm going to paint that vein. And then I'm going to paint the, the veins going outwards, but I'm going to do that feathered effect, just like we talked about earlier when we were blending in the highlighting and the shading of our um, petals. So I'm going to kind of do that feather effect going outwards, and it makes a really pretty little highlight and makes the leaf look a little bit more realistic the same thing for all my leaves it's nice because you're not going for these hyper realistic veins that would yeah. stand out and take away from the flower you know yeah no definitely we just want it to be nice and subtle but make it pop a little
All right, guys. And that is the last step of our hibiscus flower. So, Stephen, unless we have any comments or questions. Uh, no questions, but I think a lot of people love how this looks. So, awesome. Great job. Oh, thanks, Stephen. Um, so, guys, just in case you joined us midway through, we were using our Kix kit that you can purchase at Walmart.com. So, make sure to check out the link in the description. You can get those. Um, I just painted on some canvas shoes here that I also purchased from Walmart. But our Kick Studio paint works really great on leather, canvas, faux leather, all different kinds of materials. They're super pigmented. They're really easy to blend. So, if you've been seeing that trend of shoe painting and you've been wanting to check it out for yourself, make sure to pick up this kit and you can make so many different projects. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time. Bye!